What is up, fellow humans and mutants alike? My name is Kyle, and we are back at it, diving through Fall of X. I'm going to have to say, it's kind of a lukewarm experience for the most part. Uh, so far, we have the Hellfire Gallery. Went off with a bang. Enjoyed it. Liked it. All the things. Um, what else do we get? We get uh, Kitty Pride, Kate Pride, going a little darker, getting that... Uh, Getting that old school ninja energy from back in the day. What else do we get? We get Realm of X. That is just a straight up garbage fire right now. I don't know what to make of it considering that we get Typhoid Mary, which seems to be a big part and contributor with uh, Kingpin, who is now the uh, White King of the Hellfire Gala. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to feel about this thus far. I'm not enjoying what I'm seeing. Oh, and don't get me started on Ms. Marvel. Just kidding. Ms. Marvel's fine. It's just not for me. And it's really not contributing to the overall fall of X in general. Um, here, I'll do a breakdown of essentially what we get in Ms. Marvel. She hangs out with a boy. They hang out. They play video games. Um, she makes herself, uh, appear and helps some people out, which gives, uh, tips them off to Orcus. And then we get, uh, essentially, uh, Emma Frost coming in, telling her to lay low and stop being so childish and idealistic and just lay low for the moment. And that's kind of what Miss Marvel is for right now. The tone of it is not my cup of tea. Uh, I'm sure some people enjoy it, but overall, in terms of how it plays into Fall of X, pretty minimal. Pretty minimal for the most part. Uh, other than that, we have, uh, what is that, the Spider-Man uh, Nightcrawler thing going on? I haven't dived too much into that so far, um, mainly because it's more of a Spider-Man comic at the moment, but uh, right now, today, we are diving into, uh, we got uh, Jean Grey issue number two. Now, last issue, uh, if you, so essentially at the Hellfire Gala, Jean Grey dies, and in Jean Grey issue number one, we get her kind of going through her mind uh, psychically, she psychically exists and she's going through her past trying to solve an issue. And we kind of see her going through the motions of the old comics, X-Men First Class, and all that jazz. So, Fall of X, issue number two, kind of picks up on that. We get to see uh, the Phoenix and uh, kind of a contribution to that. Can she make a different uh, outcome that would change things in this part of her life? So that's what we are going to dive into. Of course, the writer is Louis Simonson. Bernard Chang is the artist. Uh, Bernard Chang's great. He does uh, the Monkey King amongst other things. If you have not checked out our panel on uh, Asian American uh, comic book uh, people in the comic book industry, um, which was from uh, WonderCon 2023. Bernard Chang is a part of that. So uh, go ahead, check that out if you want to learn more about Bernard Chang. We also get Marcello Maialo. I suck at names. Ma Marcello Maialo as the color artist. Uh, and we get, what else do we get? We get, uh, we get some Peach Momoko variants. Yeah, Peach Momoko variants. By the way, uh, if someone could get me the New York Comic Con Peach Momoko uh, variant cover with, uh, with Ileana on the cover, with Magic on the cover, uh, I, would, I would really appreciate that very much. Um, so... Let's dive in to issue number two of Jean Grey, entitled Dead Reckoning. So, we start off with, essentially, the uh, Phoenix Saga, right? So, the Phoenix Saga started off with them trying to save a space shell, right? And in this situation, we get, 
it's, uh, you know, her making the sacrifice like we usually do. She has everyone escape. Uh, she puts down, she puts down Cyclops and, uh, she makes the sacrifice and saves all of her friends and teammates. And in this process becomes the Phoenix. You know, the story. I don't need to tell you this again, even though I'm telling you this again. But she's looking at that moment and say, how can I change that? How can I make that different? Let's do some psychic game theory and play this out. And that seems to be what this whole comic book run is going to be. A little bit of game theory about what could be in the Jean Grey universe. Um, so again, we get this moment where instead of Jean Grey going to take the uh, control of the space shuttle and getting the powers of the Phoenix, what we're going to get here is uh, Wolverine, since he has the uh, essentially his healing factor, right? He can withstand the force. He has the, the best chance to stand the force. So let's play this out. What happens if Wolverine becomes... Or it takes this place, takes the place of Jean Grey in this uh, moment in time. And that's what we're getting here. And he's doing it. He takes control. Everyone else escapes, right? Jean Grey is still kind of there to psychically help him, kind of create a barrier. But while she's doing that, she's seeing into his mind. At this point in time, Jean Grey, still kind of running off the, the heels of being Marvel Girl, um, doesn't know um, Wolverine too much at this point, right? Still mystery, still an enigma, still just his rage ball, uh, where no one really knows knows too much about his past. But in like helping him, protecting him in this situation, she dives into his past. She sees it. She sees Weapon X. She sees everything that has happened uh, in his past, more or less. So, Logan takes control of the space shuttle and crash lands it. Right. And everyone seems to be safe. Everyone is floating in the water. They're like, it seems like we're safe. How's everyone? Uh, but what about Cyclops? Or not Cyclops. What about Wolverine? Where's Wolverine? Is he fine? And that's when we get out of the water, this half essentially deteriorated, incinerated, vaporized um, Wolverine popping out with his claws out of the water. And it seems that the uh, Phoenix Force has taken control of him in this situation because he was in control. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, he, he, he flies off. Um, but before he flies off, he kind of like forms into this kind of Phoenix version of himself. And in this version, it, it seems like, uh, what's his name from Naruto? Kimimaru, is that his name? The bone dude uh, from Naruto. That kind of like, he could just like take a bone out of his body or like make bone spikes. Uh, the, he kind of has that uh, look to him, which is, I dig it. It's kind of interesting. Um, so he takes off. Um, everyone's kind of confused about what just happened. They don't know about the Phoenix yet. Remember, this is a, they're playing out a situation. So they're like, what was that? What just happened? Uh, so he takes off. And at this time, uh, Charles essentially tells everyone to go about their normal business, you know? Just keep on doing what they usually do. And this is really weird for Jean Grey. She's like, why, why are we not helping Logan? Why are we not going to save Wolverine? And it, it's clear that Xavier has is hiding something and even... Uh, even Cyclops kind of notes and takes note of this that there's, he probably knows best. So he's hiding something. He probably knows what's happening. Just doesn't want to reveal it yet. Um, but this isn't acceptable for Jean Grey at all. So she essentially is like, I'm going to go search for him. Uh, you guys go on vacation. Because like, that's the whole thing. Charles Xavier is trying to distract him with a vacation to Ireland, I think. Yeah. And uh, so Dean Gray and Cyclops goes to find Wolverine. So they go out to Canada, of course. That's where he is. Um, and they're kind of looking for him, right? 
And uh, when they go to Canada, this is where they find out about the Weapon X program, where they kind of see parts of parts of it. And uh, what is it called? Uh, oh shit! What is the the program called? Where were essentially Weapon X and weapons, the Weapons Plus program, which was from Captain America and went all the way to, essentially, Wolverine. <laughs> Project Wide Awake. There we go. I got it, people. I got it. I remember things. This old geek knows what's going on. So, um, they kind of find this, this thing where they see other kind of weapons being used to create an anti-mutant army. Because remember... Wolverine was initially going to be this kind of uh, sentinel-like, human sentinel-like thing that would destroy mutants. And while they're in there, they run across Wolverine himself in the flesh, or bones, in the bones, um, as he's all looking bone-like. So, um, as this is happening, he just goes feral, and everyone's just kind of like, what, he or at least Jean Grey and uh, Cyclops are just kind of watching, waiting to see what happens and whatnot. And as this happened, he's just going mad on all these soldiers. So they kind of step in and uh, kind of help the, help Wolverine out, take out some soldiers and whatnot. Um, but it seems like the rage is just getting to Wolverine with the power of the Phoenix. The Phoenix is just too much for him. And and he recognizes that and he's just all like this is this we gotta we we this needs to stop, I I need this to end. Uh, you need to kill me, kind of like Jean Grey saying you need to kill me. You need to end the, the Phoenix. Similar situation. He recognizes that it's willpower, right? Because it, it like feeds off your will, the Phoenix. So. So he realizes that he, he has this never-ending will because he has this healing factor that allows him to kind of push forward at all times. Um, and Jean Grey is just like, no, uh, we can't do this. I can't. No, not at all. And uh, that's when <laughs> that's when Cyclops is just like, he's right, Jean. And he just goes and murders him with the quickness. Doesn't even like take a moment to ponder. He's just like, nope, he's right. Boom. Sonic Blast. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, so, yeah, as that's happening, he does a giant Sonic Blast towards uh, Scott. And when that happens, it looks like the Phoenix kind of goes out of Wolverine and into Scott. It breaks his visor. He no longer has a visor, and he's freaking out. He can, Gene kind of consults him a little bit. It's like, you could do this. You don't... You can control this. He's kind of telling him, you don't need the visor, you can control this. And he opens his eyes, and he's able to essentially control it. I don't know if Gene's helping in that situation or not. Um, but he calms him down in that moment, and he's no longer freaking out. Uh, his, eye, his optic blasts aren't, aren't going crazy, and everyone's calm. Everyone's cool. Take a breather. And then out of nowhere, Wolverine just fucking stabs him. It's great. I love it. Just snicks him in the back. Like how uh, essentially Scott didn't give two seconds of thought before trying to kill him. Neither did Wolverine. So he stabs him in the back. And as this is happening, uh, more or less, it's, it's just chaos ensues. Right, and the Phoenix's power goes crazy, and Wolverine is now the power of the Phoenix because he kills uh, Scott. So the power goes back into him, and it's too much at that point, and just vaporizes him. And Gene's just like, "Oh no!" So now, in this situation, unlike the original situation where Jean Grey took the power of the Phoenix, in this case where Wolverine took the power of the phoenix it seems that it got two people killed instead of herself killed so it seems that this is not a point it looks like she's looking almost for like a fixed point in reality what are those called again uh but or not a fixed point a point in which she could change but each point she's going to change seems to be a worst option for her so she's looking for this moment this is not the moment the phoenix force saga, if you will, is not the moment to change in 
Jean Grey's past. So she moves forward. She moves forward in her life as she psychically travels throughout her life. And the next destination she goes to is Madeline Pryor. And that will end this issue of Jean Grey, issue number two. Um, I really like the writing uh, that we get from Louis Simonson, but the overall gimmick of killing a character off and uh, redoing a new arc with them via issue number one is always like you need to recognize in the history of comic books that this has been used as a tool to boost sales and Consumers and readers of comics know that at this point. So even though this is this is pretty good, I st- this is why a lot of people don't like it. This is why uh, Danny didn't like it. Um, you can't play this game and expect people to come in feeling like it's something new and refreshing when we know you're extracting dollars from your market. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's it's weird when we're in this game of like Marvel Comics is literally a rounding error for Disney. The fact that they they even still make comics, I think they just see it as a marketing division for Marvel and Disney at this point and budget accordingly. But I don't know. I'm not sure. If it was something that mattered more, we would be putting more money into it, right? Because it seems like we're getting these IPs that are coming from these comic book properties. So ideally, it would be better to invest in the writers of the comic books, which will they'll be, then be funneled into your vertically integrated uh, movie system. Right? Am I just better at business than some of these people? I don't know. It just makes sense. Like, if you want to make more money, I'm not even talking about making good content here. I'm just like, wouldn't they want to make more money? I don't know. Okay. Enough of that. But that is Jean Grey issue number two. In the future, we will talk a little bit about uh, Invincible Iron Man. Uh, We won't be talking about Realm, Realm of X. I don't know what's happening there. And eventually, we will be going back to... uh. Wolverine and uh, 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 what's it called? X-Men Red with the uh, Civil War happening on Arako. Um, and like I said, uh, read both issue one and two of Miss Marvel. It's a good slice of life romp for the most part, but um, I'm not into it. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Um, Let's see, uh, what else did I read uh, so far? I think that is it for the, this week. There's a lot to digest and to kind of go over. I'm not really sure the future of this at, the, at this moment, but we'll keep following. We'll definitely keep following. Maybe we'll bring more positive people on board because I guess we're, we're just too negative over here. So maybe it's us. And not you. Maybe. Who knows? But that will do it for this episode of Podcast of X. Remember to visit freespeechgeek.com. That's right. We just updated the website so you could actually listen to Podcast of X directly on the website while browsing our articles and content be sure to like and subscribe to both free speech geek and simply new type to get your mo get get your most get the most uh gundam and x-men news as well as uh comic book convention coverage but that'll do it for us this week be sure to uh, i'm i'm losing it I'm, i'm on my own and i'm babbling um Oh, I remember how I end these things. Remember, remember, the robots will kill you, so play some game theory in your mind. See where things play out, you know? Not everything has to, you know, we can, we can plan it. We can, we can make things happen. That's why people have emergency uh, scenarios and situations. All right, I'm bad. Peace.
Thanks for listening, humans and mutants alike. If you like this podcast, be sure to check out Podcast of X Classics, which are currently being uploaded daily on YouTube. These are backlogged issues of Podcast of X that have never been uploaded on YouTube. So if you haven't given them a listen, go check them out. And be sure to check out freespeechgeek.com.